I'm standing at the bow of this 23-foot V-bottom skiff that we built, and I'm looking at the breast hook right there, and boy, it's glossy. It looks fantastic, you know. Chances are, if you've got an oak tree in your backyard, it's probably got something like this right in it. You wouldn't know until you started cutting at it, but, uh, you know, you can find them all over the place. This was a 60-degree uh, uh, cut crook in the tree from the branch to the trunk. This is the kind of stuff right here that makes the boat look really sharp. Really sharp and well done, you know. Look at the annual rings right in the middle right here. I centered it up so they would be on the center, you know, the hump of it right here. And uh, if I didn't, it would be off to one side or the other. And so you have to be pretty careful. It's kind of tricky fitting something that you want onto the piece that you've got and figure out whether or not it's going to come out looking good. This looks great because of the way it's centered on there. The varnish is basically done. I've got five coats of varnish on here, a sealer and four coats of lust. Uh, you know, and it's the gloss lust. Here's our quarter knee all varnished up, and it's nice and shiny. This one looks great. It's got the grain following it right around and uh, fits nice in there. It's as far as we ever take them, right there. And uh, I'll tell you, it's smooth, it's shiny, and uh, the boat is really, really exactly what I envisioned when I designed this boat, maybe almost 10 years ago. And, uh, here it is finally right here. Boy, this thing is huge inside and it feels very much like a skiff. It really does. When you look around, it's just got the whole flavor of it, you know. And uh, we're back after it. We're going to cut out for the transom for the outboard motor. We have to draw it first or we wouldn't know where to cut it. And, uh, you know, it's going to be rounded at the top, but it's going to be square cornered at the bottom. So, you know, I need to do that with a skill saw, actually. There's no saw that you can cut this with on any kind of curve or even straight other than a circular saw and not have the blade wander all over the place on the other side, you know. I mean, I see people do it and I've tried to do it many years ago and it just has no future in it. So, you know, I have to plunge cut it with a skill saw. So that's what I'm going to do. And uh, like I say, I'll get down into the corners and then just finish the two corners with a handsaw. So we're going to start up here on this side you know, and uh, get down to a straight corner. It's going to be pretty deep, way right down in here, straight across, corner like that, and then round at the top again over here. So, for right now, what I want to do is transfer the height that the engine is supposed to be. It's supposed to be 25 inches from here up to the cutout in the transom. So, the only thing I'm really concerned here with is the height because I'm going to lay it out on the inside when I cut it. So, this is the proper height right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to Drill a hole in there, right through to the inside. Here's the hole I drilled from outside. It did come out pretty close to the center line, but the only thing I was concerned about is the height. I had measured it 25 inches from the bottom of the boat and uh, up to that line. I did slant that line just a little bit downhill in case I wanted to use it. I'd cut the whole thing right off. But uh, I get looking at it and I think what I'm going to do is cut it a half an inch lower than that just to make sure that the uh, cavitation plate's low enough compared to the bottom of the boat. The first thing I need to do is establish a line straight across at 90 degrees to the center line because that's the only reference I really have or I can trust right here. I've uh, relied on that center line all along through the whole build, and uh, that's the one I'm going to use right now. Now, I'm driving a nail right alongside the line at the very bottom because it makes it easy for me to handle the square. That's pretty much all it's for. I can't uh, hold that whole square with one hand, you know, and expect it to stay exactly where I want it while I'm putting a pencil line alongside of it. It just doesn't work, so that's all that is. I'll draw a nice line right straight across that you can follow. Well, I made a mark right here. It's 12 inches from the center line. So what I'm going to do now is make a line that's parallel to the slant of the side, you know, to the pitch of the side. So I'm going to measure 90 degrees to the post, something like that, and I get, see this rule is a little worn out, but I get 24 and 5 sixteenths. So, you know, 24 and 3 eighths maybe. So I'm going to put that measurement up here, 90 degrees to the post, and I'm going to have 24 and 3 eighths right there. 
Now I'm going to connect those two lines with a rule and put a pencil line on there. That's the angle of the side of the boat right there. So I'm going to straight that on with my pencil, just like that. Now, all there is left really is to get some sort of a round uh, shape right here drawn on there so that I can follow that around and then cut down. So that's what we're going to do now is see what looks good. Well, I'm trying to decide exactly what the radius I should put on this cut right here. And uh, I had it at six inches, but uh, I've moved it around. I'm at eight inches now, eight inches to there and eight inches to here. So I'm just going to scratch it in there a little bit. I don't have a pencil in this pair of dividers, but uh, I think this looks pretty good. Right here. Now, I just have to go over that with a pencil because I can hardly see it. Well, I've been dreading doing this. This is not something that you want to do every day because, you know, it's kind of drastic, really. You know, look at that big, giant transom that was just all in one piece. What might make a cut like this difficult is uh, the guard in the first place. What's supposed to make things safe, trying to hold that guard up, and you would have to, is uh, something that's almost impossible. So, you know, it's just a situation that you just have to pull the guard up and wire it up there. So. You know, I'm not sure that everybody will be happy about me saying that or even doing it, but, you know, this is what I have to do to get it done myself. You know, it's just a matter of, of trying to get the blade on the line. That seems easier to do if you plunge the saw a little bit, because you don't have the whole deck of the saw down against the surface. It makes it so you kind of plunge a little, and if it's not right, you can pull it up and move a little bit and plunge. Once it's in line, then you plunge it right down through there and then push it right through and uh, continue down a little bit more. Uh, maybe two or three of those and then every so often I have to make a, a different kind of cut and cut all the scrap out of the way. So it makes it easier for me to continue and get lined up again every time. So, you know, if I can knock some of it out of there, I do. Making a cut like this, you have to really think it out really, really well because if you were out of position or something like that and then kind of committed to the cut and weren't able to keep up with it, well, you can have trouble. You can't re-steer or anything like that. You're cutting straight cuts around the radius. So you have to really sit nice and tight. I'm parked. I'm sitting on a block. You know, I've already imagined the cut starting and finishing up and all those things so that I, I don't have any surprises, really. I've got my right elbow on my leg and that just makes it way more stable because you know I'm not the strongest guy in the world but I'm able to make things like this happen because of positioning. The other thing I have to recommend is stopping at the right point. Uh, you don't want to cut past your line and the other thing you don't want to do is pull the saw out with the blade rotating. You know, Basically you let the trigger go, let the blade stop and then pull it out. Well, there's our first cut right there. Came out pretty good. You know, it can be a little tricky, but uh, you have to have control over your saw, that's for certain. And so, yeah, we want to just leave the line right on there. And there it is right there all the way around. So I haven't cut past the line. And, you know, that's exactly what you're trying to do is stay on one side of the line here. Well, look at these cuts right here. You can see how many cuts it takes to get around a corner like that. It took a, a bunch just like that all the way up in here, but I've cut those pieces off. So, you know, that's quite a few cuts right there, following that line as close as you can get. Leave the line so you can still see what you've got right across the edge right there. You have to be awful careful doing something like this because numbers of different things can happen. You know, the saw can walk out on you, you know, all kinds of stuff like that. Pieces can fly out at you if you're not awful careful, you know, and... Uh, you know, you can have all kinds of problems, but, you know, this is the only way that I know how to make a curve like this in a piece of wood that's like this, as solid as this, two and a quarter inches thick. So, you know, that's what we do. I'm going to dub the top of it a little bit, you know, to get it to shape in a little bit different right up in here. Any kind of reciprocating blade will drift and uh, it just doesn't cut well and it's vibrating like crazy. This is the way to do it. It's just that you have to be fairly experienced to get away with it. Well, now we're on the starboard side, and uh, I have to cut this one different. I have to start at the bottom and cut my way up because I, I just couldn't possibly handle the saw like this. So uh, that's what I have to do. So I'm going to plunge in at the bottom 
which is the worst part of the whole thing, really. And then once I get in there a little bit, I'll move uphill and then start cutting angles to it like that. So, I don't know, here we go. Let's try it out. These cuts right here are still all plunge cuts, is what they are. You know, it's not that I can just start off and then re-steer and get back on the line or anything like that. I'm forced to plunge cut this side right here. I can't get rid of the scrap as easy and all those kinds of things. So, you know, it's, it's just that you have to control the saw. And to me, that's the easiest way to do it. You know, the very bow end of the saw is 90 degrees to the blade, so you kind of use it like a hinge, you know, and hinge your way down in there. But if you can't stop her from walking out, you're in really, really dangerous territory doing this. You can see that that's quite a deep cut. You know, it's two and a quarter inches is what it is, and it's solid. As I finish up here, I'm acting a little bit different with the saw because once I get done with the cut, the blade's not down in a slot that I have to pull it out of. So I just go right by and let the scrap fall right off. The blade's still turning and I let it go. Before I put it down in my lap though, it stops turning. Well, there they both are cut already and uh, this one here, I didn't make quite as many cuts on it. Just means that the facets on the on the radius here will be a little tiny bit bigger. It doesn't really mean anything. It was hard to do it uphill, so I decided I'd make fewer cuts. Now we're gonna make our cut across the bottom right here, all the way across, but I'm gonna tack a batten on low right here and follow the batten with the saw. So it'll come out nice and straight, and I won't have to tune it up or plane it or do anything to it. And I'm just gonna follow that right across. This cut is fairly simple, but it is still a plunge cut. So starting off is the most complicated part. Once you get down in there, it's just pushing it along like any other cut. And it'll come out really nice and straight because your batten's nice and straight. That's exactly what we want. Because I don't want to have to doctor that thing all, all up. I want it done right off the saw. And all I have to do is poke with the corner for it to get out. Well, now I'm going to take my handsaw and cut the thing right out. First, I'm going to cut a few of these little spots out that I didn't get all the way through, and then uh, I'm going to cut the corners out. So These two cuts are a little bit different. The vertical cut is a cross cut, and the other cut is a horizontal cut, and it's a rip. And uh, both of them are different. You could use a different saw on each one, but basically I've got a cross cut saw, but it's sharpened pretty aggressively and it's got pretty good sized teeth. So it, it'll do the ripping just like this, but uh, it's a little slower in a rip than it is in a cross cut. The other side rips way easier. It's the nature of the material, I suppose. Both of these cuts are kind of just creeping up on each other. I'm going to cut one and, and look on the other side and see how close it is. You know, then I cut the other one and I just kind of sneak up on that corner. The hardest part is to get it to connect halfway across the material. And that's okay. I cut up to the corners and then I just kind of rip the thing out of there. So you, you'll see how we do that. Well, there it is. We've got it sewn right out. I've got a couple little spots in the corner I could sew out here. And I'll have to tune that up a little bit with a chisel. Same thing over here. Yeah. Well, you can see why I put a batten and followed it with the saw because I could never make it come out looking like that. That's just nice and straight and true. You know, maybe it needs a sanding and that's about it. And I got to tune the corners right up in the, here with a chisel a little tiny bit. But uh, 
looks pretty good. Well, this is the cut on the port side right here. And, uh, you know, it's a radius right there. And it feels pretty good, uh, you know, uh, to have cut it with a flat blade and have it come out like that, you know, that's, that's all you could ask for, really. There's a few things to do. We got to smooth it up a little bit, you know, and round the corners and stuff like that. But uh, it came out pretty nice. You know, uh, it's a stiff transom, really stiff. Two and a quarter inches, seven plies of white oak. And I'm telling you, that is strong. So, you know, the outboard motor is ready to go on there. We're going to take it down to the outboard motor place. And, uh, you know, I'm going to put one coat of paint on it before it goes out the door. And uh, that's pretty much it. Then we're going to be taking it for a ride and doing some video work on it. So I think that's going to be the gas of the whole thing. For me, that's just fantastic, you know, watching it afterwards. So, and being part of the whole thing. So... You know, that's, that's what we're up to next. And uh, don't forget to come and see us at the Newport Boat Show between the 15th and the 18th.